when we talk about variation, we're talking about three main kinds of variation. We're talking about direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Now, all of these types of variation involve the relationship between variables, um, and that, that relationship between them involves what we call a constant of variation. So, for this video, we will use the variable k to represent our constant of variation. So, I, I think the most important part about variation and the easiest way for you to understand is that you have to carefully read the problem and write it exactly as it's written. So, let me just do a chart for you first, I think, um, of these, these three different types of variation. So, when we have direct variation, okay, so for example, x varies directly with y. When you see direct, you should automatically think multiplication, okay, or that's what I want you to start thinking, multiplication, because it's going to multiply by that constant of variation. So the equation for this, x, because x comes first, oh goodness, x comes first, so I want to do x equals, now varies directly means I'm going to multiply, so I'm going to take that constant of variation and I'm going to multiply it to the variable that comes next, which is y, okay? So that's direct variation. Now, for inverse variation, we're going to think divide. My pins want to slip here, I apologize. All right, so inverse variation, we're thinking division, okay? So let's take these same two variables, and let's say that x varies inversely with y. So again, I'm going to take it exactly as it's written. That means that x equals Inversely means divide. Oh, I forgot my y here. So I'm going to take that constant of variation and I'm going to divide it by y. Okay? Finally, we have joint variation. And joint variation um, is a lot like direct variation. Um, it's going to take more than one variable and we're still going to be multiplying. So, my goodness. For jointly, if I said that x varies jointly with y and z, that means y and z together. So it's going to be x equals, I'm going to take that constant of variation, and again, x comes first because it comes first in the problem. Um, that constant of variation times y times z, okay? So half the battle is getting your equations set up this way, direct versus inverse versus joint variations, okay? Let's do a couple examples of each one, and um, I think it'll make a little more sense to you. Okay, so I've just taken a second to kind of write us out a problem here, so you didn't have to watch me write everything, but... Let's take a look at this because there's essentially three parts with problems like this, okay? And I've kind of written them on separate lines, and they may not be on separate lines whenever you read them, but just so you can see the, the separate parts. All right, so the first is x varies directly with y, so let's think about what that means. That means that x equals some constant of variation times y. Okay, easy enough. Now it tells me that x equals 2 when y equals 8. Well, let's plug that in the formula and see what happens. So x equals 2 when y equals 8, right? Okay, so now what I can do is I can solve this for k so that I've, I, I know what that constant of variation, and it's called a constant of variation because no matter how x and y changes, that's constant. It stays the same. So no matter what, and I'm going to solve this for k, 2 over 8 reduces to 1 fourth. No matter what the values of x and y become, 
in this relationship, as defined here, then the constant of variation is going to be one fourth. So essentially, if I want an, an equation for this x and y relationship, then x is going to equal one fourth times y. Now look at the second part of the problem here. What is x when y is 20? Well, now that I know my constant of variation, I can plug y equals 20 in. So what is x when y is 20? Well, 1 fourth times 20 is 5. Okay, so essentially three parts. Set up the equation. Plug in what you know and find the constant of variation. And then solve for what is asked. So set up your equation. I'm just going to write these steps here for you. Set up your equation. Find the constant of variation. I guess I should make that step two. So set up the equation. Find the constant of variation, and to do this, you're going to have to use what they give you. Okay, use what's given. And then the third step, after you've found that constant of variation, you're going to write a new equation. Write your equation, and this time you're going to include that constant that you just found. So I'm going to say with K. And then finally, you're going to find the value asked by plugging in. I have a room here. Ah, plug in. Okay, set up your equation. Find the constant of variation by using what's given. Write your new equation with K and then find the value of what's given. Let's do an example with inverse. Ooh, went the wrong way here. Let's say that we'll use some new variables. P varies inversely with H. And that P is five when H is two. Find P when H is six. So let's see, let's set up our equation first. So P varies inversely, that means I'm gonna be dividing. P is five when H is two. So let's plug in and let's find that constant. So five equals K over two. So to solve this for that constant, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. So I get that constant is 10. So now I have P equals 10 over H. So finally, I'm ready for the last part, which is to find P when H is 6. So if H is 6, I'm just going to plug in here. 10 over 6, that'll reduce to 5 thirds, and there's my answer. So remember, set up that equation, find K, I've got my new equation here, and then found the value that's asked.